Whew. Okay, uh, Chris the Carpenter here. Um, I am going to rebuild the entire machine from scratch again. <laughs> I'm a little bummed out about it, but um, I'm actually a little excited as well because I I learned so much from the first version of the machine, and I I figured out. In hindsight, they're kind of forehead slappers. There's a few things I, I should have known better. There's a few things that I did know better, and I did them anyway. Um, things that I, from being, you know, I'm a cabinet maker, and um, things I should have known better along those lines. Um, and then just some things that, you know, again, I can't stress enough. There's so many obvious things in hindsight. So, um, so let's jump in it. The... The, the very first thing uh, comes from a guy named Norm Abram. Norm Abram is a carpenter, woodworker, and a cabinet maker on uh, public television. He's up here in New England in the States. And he is uh, he's a, he's a master woodworker. He's phenomenal. And one of his philosophies is don't measure. And it's one that, that I hold true and I, I, I believe in wholeheartedly. Don't measure. If you were to measure a board 30 inches mark it with a pencil, put it on the saw and cut it, and then you were to take another board and mark it at 30 inches and cut it, those boards will never be the same length, ever. If you, uh, so I guess the point I'm getting at is your accuracy comes out of order of operations. Your accuracy does not come out of precise measuring. Precise measuring is great, but order of operations is where your accuracy comes from. And, um, and then beyond that, and I can show you examples of that here in a second. Um, beyond that, uh, physics are a major, major issue here, and um, some pretty obvious things. So let's let's kind of review a couple things from uh, last night, and we'll get into it. Um, the main thing: very large mass being moved here, and the thing moving it very, very far away from the mass, with very, very long connecting pieces and a lot of places for chatter to enter the system. So we got to get those to go away. Number two, um, a very large mass. We've got 60, 70, 80 pounds in this gantry, and um, we're trying to move it back and forth. Why am I moving the gantry? Move the table. The table weighs 10 pounds, if that. Move the table and move the table with the lead screw that's right next to the table. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Even if there's a giant piece of work, you know, unless it's a four-inch slab of aluminum on there, the table's never going to weigh as much as the gantry. Don't move the gantry. Duh. Number two, bigger tube. Much bigger tube. This inch and a half by one is, no, I'm going up to three by two box tube um, for the uprights. Number two, stop using box tube. <laughs> I built this whole gantry out of box tube, and it was a mess. The, the tube has a slight, a very, very slight curve to it, but it screws you when you're trying to get it aligned just right. Angle iron. Look at this. In the end, hindsight, three-inch plate steel three inch plate steel. What did I end up making? A big ass piece of angle iron. Excuse me, I was trying not to cuss in these videos. A big old piece of angle iron. It should have been angle iron in the first place, period. That's becoming angle iron. Um, fixed gantry. Gantry welded to the frame. I can put my main upright about here, not quite centered. It will be offset from center however far the, the router is. And then I can put a diagonal from the top of that bad boy all the way to the front corner of my table. Okay? Why, why not? Big diagonal things make things strong. The more diagonally it is, the stronger it is. So why not put big honking diagonals on it? Done. Moving on. Don't measure. <laughs> this is an example of why you shouldn't try to measure. <clears throat> This plate was attached after the fact, and it needed to be squared two directions. It needed to be squared this way, and it needed to be squared this way. This way, and this way. Don't, 
don't do that. I, I, I fought that tooth and nail to try to keep that square. Instead, on version two, look at this. With three inch box tube, I'm gonna stick the motor right through the tube. Well, check it out. Now, now we've got a motor attached to this face of the box tube, okay? This square tube was squared during assembly. This is order of operations, and I, gosh darn it, I know better. I know how to do this. I'm a good, damn good carpenter, and I should stop thinking I'm a welder, and I need to start thinking like a carpenter. Order of operations. This tube will be square to the frame. It will be square to these rails. It will be, it'll be plumb level square, period. And thus, the face of it will also be. So if the motor attaches to that face, the motor will be square out of the gate. No reason to try to square up a plate or try to weld a plate and keep it straight. Forget about it. That motor will be straight because it's attached to something that's straight. That's the right way to do it. And I, uh, sorry, I'm a little aggressive tonight because I am frustrated trying to learn SketchUp. And, um, <laughs> And the more I design this new, uh, this new version, the more I realize what I should have done on the, on the last version. This is to scale. That is what three inch box tube looks like, two by three. Big and heavy and gnarly. Here's the Y axis motor. Stick it through the tube. It's gonna be square, period. I might put a secondary plate over this, a little Band-Aid plate. Um, to beef up this weak point. Um, but again, we're talking three inches wide, so it should be good, I, even if I don't reinforce it. Here are the glides inside for the table. I'll run the table, the glides, um, uh, the, the bearing blocks on those glides, and then the table will sit just above this rail and slide back and forth. Duh! Um, the... Um, the uh, lead screw will be right there, directly underneath the table, as close to what it's moving as you can possibly have. Duh. <laughs> so, there you go. That is, this is version two. This is what we're going to be building. Um, I'm starting to do some materials, uh, and it looks like I'm actually not going to have to order that much material. I'm using a lot less material but a lot larger material. And um, I'll put some big fat corners in, um, I'll put some big fat corners here and there and there and there. And uh, so this base unit can't rack either way. And um, you know, what do you know? I think I'm gonna have just one big heavy gnarly system. Not to mention, now that this gantry and this base unit are all one thing, they are now a singular mass. So when that table is sliding forward, or when just the z-axis, you know, bracket, is moving left and right on the x, you're moving a very small mass in relation to this big old mass of the entire gosh darn frame. And that's the way it should have been done. So, that's what I'm building. Probably going to call Turner here in the next couple days, get a truck here, and get some steel delivered, and, uh, and start putting this thing together. There you go. Oh, I will say this. Um, although I'm, I'm just getting used to how SketchUp works, I, I'm a Creative Commons person, you know, share alike, shareware, etc., etc., um, just massive, massive amounts of love to the people who do stuff like this. You know, I, I looked at the, um, was depository, re repository, the, you know, the Google SketchUp parts list, and anything you could ever want, someone has already drawn, i.e. Chinese-made bearing blocks <laughs> for uh, ball screws. It's, it was right there, and that's exactly the model I have. Same with the motor, um, same with the glides, they're all, they're all 
in the system. Uh, same with the router. That's my router, Porter Cable 690. Um, I, I think I'm going to like that a whole lot. So learning SketchUp, we'll, we'll figure it out. So um, whoo -hoo, in conclusion, um, I get to build it all over again. Woo -hoo! It's going to go so much better the second time. It's going to be smoother. It's going to be cleaner. I have a, um, I have a full-size working machine. I've already done all my math on all my spacing, you know, the relations of the screws to the glides. Um, I'm going to do little things like move this rail way up. I'm probably going to widen these. I'm going to go ahead and trade travel for rigidity. Um, I've, I've a lot, you know, I've accepted that in my mind to trade travel for rigidity, and um, and the bottom line with with version two is I'm going to have a slightly smaller machine in terms of you know cutting size, but um, but stiff as a board, built like a like a brick poopy house and just heavy big honking chunks of steel and period <laughs> period um i would always rather have a small amount of really good stuff than a big amount of crap and if i got to trade travel for rigidity i have made the decision i'm going to do it so say farewell to version one this uh this whole thing's going in the scrap heap and except for the stand, I'll probably save the stand, but everything else is going bye-bye. Going to order some steel, and we're going to try it all over again. So, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle that in the blogs, but, um, but keep your eyes open. I think I might take a couple days off um, from blogging, uh, just kind of getting my ducks in a row. Um, but the version 2 will be blogged as version 1 will be, and we'll go from there. So, live and learn, and, uh, ting, a little more enthusiastic ting tonight, ting, okay, that's enough.